Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me tonight as I perform my graduate recital and finish my Master of Music degree at NYU. Um, just a couple of notes before we begin. This uh, meeting will be recorded and um, I, I want to ask that you please remain muted throughout the duration of the performance. Um, you can also feel free to turn your video off if you want, and that way you can continue to eat your dinner or walk your dog or check the sports and none will be the wiser. And um, I also wanted to just direct your attention. I have put the program um, into the chat. It's available on Google Drive or on the Facebook event so you can follow along. The first half of my recital it includes a brief lecture about the history of American musical review. And you'll notice that all of the music included in this half either comes from a musical review or contributed to the development of the genre. Um, although a virtual recital is not the same as a live in person performance, I'm so grateful that you took the time to join me tonight and, and I'm really excited to share this music with you. Enjoy. Liebe, l'amour, amor, amoris. Some say that love's a little boy, and some say it's a bird. Some say it makes the world go round, and some say that's absurd. But when I asked the man next door, who looked as if he knew, his wife was very cross indeed, and said it wouldn't do. Does it look like a pair of pajamas or the ham in a temperance hotel? Oh, tell me the truth about love. Does its odor remind one of llamas or has it a comforting smell? Oh, tell me the truth about love. Is it prickly to touch as a hedge is, or soft as eiderdown for love? Is it sharp or quite smooth at the edges? Oh, tell me the truth about love. Oh, tell me the truth about love. I looked inside the summer house. It wasn't ever there. I tried the Thames at Maidenhead and Brighton's bracing air. I don't know what the blackbird sang or what the rosy said, but it wasn't in the chicken run or un. Can it pull extraordinary faces? Is it usually sick on a swing? Oh, tell me the truth about love. Does it spend all its time at the races? Or fiddling with pieces of string? Oh, tell me the truth about love. Has it views of its own about money? Does it think patriotism enough? Or its stories vulgar but funny? Oh, tell me the truth about love. Oh, tell me the truth about love. you meet it, 
I am told you can't forget. I've sought it since I was a child, but haven't found it yet. I'm getting on for 35, and still I do not know what kind of creature it can be that bothers people so. When it comes, will it come without warning? Just as I'm picking my nose. Oh, tell me the truth about love. Will it knock on my door in the morning? Or tread in the bus on my toes? Oh, tell me the truth about love. Will it come like a change in the weather? Will its greeting be courteous or bluff? Will it alter my life altogether? Oh, tell me the truth about love. Oh, tell me the truth.
It wasn't the policeman's fault in all the traffic roar. Instead of shouting halt when he saw me, he shouted amor, 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 amor. Even the ice cream man, free ice creams by the score. Instead of shouting butter pecan, one look at me. He shouted amor, amor, amor. All over town it went that way. Everybody took off the day. Even philosophers understood how good was the good cause I looked so good. The poor stopped needy taking less. The rich stopped needing more. Instead of shouting no and yes, both looking at me shouted a more. Da -dee -da -dee -da -dee -da -dee -da. dragged to court. The judge said I disturbed the peace and the jury gave him what for. The judge raised his hand and instead of desist and cease, judgey came to the stand, took my hand. And whispered, Amor, 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 Amor. Night was turning into day. I walked alone away. Never see the town again. But as I pass the church house door, instead of singing amen, the choir was singing amor. Da 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 amor. Dreadfully overwrought. 
beneath each tree in Tennessee, erotic books are read. And when alligators thud through the Mississippi mud, sex rears its ugly head. But I like America, its simplicity, and its passion for publicity, and come what may, give me a holiday in the good old USA. Yes, I like America, its society offers infinite variety, and come what may, I shall return someday to the good old USA. That last piece by Noel Coward is a great example of the intersection between European and North American musical styles and comedy. Um, as many of you may already know, uh, my background was primarily in classical voice. I did my undergraduate degree and my post baccalaureate diploma in classical singing. And during my time at NYU, I became interested in learning more about how classical musical styles evolved into musical theater and the types of music that ride the line between those two genres. Um, and many of my favorite musical theater pieces actually originated from the musical review. So I'm excited today to take you through a brief history of the American Musical Review from its origins in Europe to today. Firstly, what is a musical review? Well, it's a type of production that involves singing, dancing, music, and sketches. These various components are not driven by a specific storyline, but are usually presented under a common theme, uh, which is often topical or satirical. A review can include um, elements of cabaret, variety show, pantomime, burlesque, and musical comedy. Review began in 19th century France and consisted of satirical scenes that commented on recent political and social events. It became popular in America in the late 19th century, growing out of the traditions of cabaret and vaudeville. Uh, in my first set of songs, I featured the composers Britton, Poulenc, and Bolcom, who are widely known for their classical compositions, but who also wrote cabaret music, which was the precursor to musical. A distinctly American review came about with the establishment of the Ziegfeld Follies in 1907. The Follies included large casts, um, elaborate costumes, and sometimes several directors, designers, and composers. If you've ever seen the movie Funny Girl, featuring Barbara Streisand as Fanny Bryce, you've seen a glimpse into these very elaborate productions, and also how they commented or satirized these sort of social norms of the day. And as you'll see in this picture, Barbara Streisand as Fanny Bryce is singing in a number where she's a blushing bride that is very pregnant. <laughs> the Follies was only one of several reviews in New York at the time, uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. And many of the songs featured in those various reviews have been made a part of the Great American Songbook. Uh, which is the canon of America's most famous uh, popular songs and jazz standards of the early 20th century. In my next set, I will perform three pieces by Irving Berlin, George Gershwin, and Cole Porter, all who were major contributors to the Great American Songbook and musical theater in general. Now, musicals, as we know them today, are actually defined as book musicals. And a book musical is made up of three major elements, the book, the music, and the lyrics. Uh, while reviews and musicals include many of the same um, elements, book musicals follow a specific storyline and often include more dialogue and more dramatic themes. 
The music, the lyrics, and the review, or sorry, the music, the lyrics, and the choreography are all motivated by the characters in the plot. Musicals like Showboat, which premiered in 1927, and Oklahoma, which premiered in 1943, were considered revolutionary in how they intertwined the music and the storyline. And most musicals before the advent of the book musical would actually be considered musical review. And uh, that's because many of the songs were written as standalone pieces and then inserted into a show and often had nothing to do with the actual storyline they were following. Musical reviews have continued to evolve and contemporary reviews often include smaller scale productions and either dedicated compositions, which are written specifically for a review, you know, with additional dialogue or dance numbers or comedy sketches, or trunk songs, which refers to pieces that were originally written for a show, but then either removed or replaced, put away, and then pulled out of the trunk, as it were, dusted off and included in a review later on. Uh, there's also retrospective reviews, which feature a composer's most popular pieces from various shows and song cycles for soloist or ensemble with a unifying musical theme or subject matter, often telling a character's whole story in one song. Some examples of these contemporary reviews will be featured in the final set of the first half of the program, um, including Sondheim on Sondheim, which is a multimedia retrospective review um, with interview footage and some of the most famous songs written by Stephen Sondheim from 19 of his musicals. Closer Than Ever by Maltby and Shire and Make Me a Song by William Finn, which are both reviews that are partly retrospective, but also include trunk songs and dedicated compositions. And lastly, Songs for a New World by Jason Robert Brown, which is a theatrical song cycle about the moment of decision. This is just a snapshot of the um, reviews of the 20th and 21st centuries. Some of the greatest songs in the musical theater canon um, have, or the musical theater catalog have come out of musical review. And in the following two sets, I invite you to observe the shifts in aesthetic and subject matter as we move from the reviews of 1913 to 2006. began it 
it was heaven's plan there should be a girl for every single man to my great regret someone has upset heaven's pretty program for we've never met i'm clutching at straws just because i may meet him yet somebody loves me i wonder who i wonder who he can be somebody loves me i wish i knew
with clouds take me to the world out where i can push through crowds take me to the world a world that smiles with streets instead of aisles where i can walk for miles with you Let me see the world that's real. Show me how it's done. Teach me how to laugh, to feel. Move me to the sun. Just hold my hand whenever we arrive. Take me to the world where I can be. Let me see the world that smiles. Take me to the world. Somewhere I can walk for miles. Take me to the world. With all around, things growing in the ground, where birds that make a sound are birds. We shall see the world come true. We shall have the world. I won't be afraid with you. We shall have the world. I'll hold your hand and know in my life that I trace every day, patterns in the ways I sing the things I say, patterns in the ceiling as I lie awake. Why are patterns haunting every move I make? Just look here I am on cue again, upset, feeling torn in two again, afraid, saying I'm okay, making little jokes till I run away again. And yet today I am not the same. I feel my it's frame. Strange feelings rise, feelings with no name, and I can't face them, so I shake them hard. Fold them up and tuck them safely away. Again. that begin as I walk through the door. Patterns in the... <sighs> Patterns in the curtains and the kitchen floor. Patterns in the ways I try, but never 
change. Just look, as I'm thrown a curve again, I leap, then I lose my nerve again. In tears, running home I go, secretly relieved, safe with what I know. Again, patterns through the day I seem to use to give my life a shape. Patterns through the house that give me comfort when I need escape. Patterns that lead me nowhere.
Jenny's afraid of water. I mean, she swims so well, but still, she's afraid of water. So she won't go near the sea. Not me. And Katie's afraid of darkness. I mean, she sleeps and all, but still, she's afraid of darkness. So when the lights are out, she has to hold my hand. I don't understand. I'm not afraid of anything. Be it mountains, water, dragons, dark or sky. I'm not afraid of anything. Tell me where's the challenge if you never try. So watch me fly. I'm not afraid. Daddy's afraid of babies. I mean, he got through me, but now he's afraid of babies. Guess he's scared of what they'll be. Not me. And mama's afraid of crying. You know, she tries to hold it in. She's afraid of crying. And she can look at you with tears stuck in her eye. And I don't know why. I'm not afraid of anything. Be it growing old or going out of style. I'm not afraid of anything. Who could give up what they want without a trial. Another mile. I'm not afraid. And I hear the calling of adventure. And I hear the ringing in my ears. The lights are glaring. Trumpets blaring. I'm right here. And I hear the calling of tomorrow. And I hear the stirring in my bones. And David loves me. He's afraid to hold me. Can you feel the calling of excitement? Can you feel the pounding in my heart? The lights are ready, pulse is steady. I can start. Never stop the calling of the challenge. Blessing on the water and the stones. And David loves me. He's afraid to tell me. David loves me. He's afraid to hold me. He's afraid to trust me. And he'll always be. He's afraid of me. I'm not afraid of anyone. I am sure to win with anyone at all. I'm not afraid. alive who could get behind this wall so let them call and watch them fall cause after all I'm not afraid that cost a fortune, so I'm told. I guess I'd look good in diamonds, and sables might add to my charms. But if someone I don't care for would buy them, I'd rather have to love in arms. What good would the moon be? shared it 
its beams, what good would dreams come true be? If love wasn't in those dreams, and a primrose path, what would be the fun of walking down a path like that without the right one? What good would the night be? The following set of songs are all from uh, the musical The King and I by Rodgers and Hammerstein and sung by the character Anna Leon Owens. Uh, this musical is based off of the real memoirs of Anna Leon Owens, who served as the governess to the King of Siam in the early 1860s. She arrived in Bangkok with her son Louis to teach the king's uh 39 wives and concubines and 82 children a modern western education and she stayed for nearly six years see those lights jutting out into the river over there that is bangkok we're nearly there no lewis your father would not have wanted us to be afraid. Whenever I feel afraid, I hold my head erect and whistle a happy tune so no one will suspect I'm afraid. While shivering in my shoes, I strike a careless pose and whistle a happy tune so no one ever knows I'm afraid. The result of this deception is very strange to tell, for when I fool the people I fear, I fool myself as well. I whistle a happy tune, and every single time, the happiness in the tune convinces me that I'm not afraid. Make believe you're brave, and the trick will take you far. You may be as brave as you make believe you are. to Siam, it was to me just a little spot on a map. But now I have lived here for more than a year, and I have met the people of Siam, and I've come to like them very much, very much indeed. It's a very ancient saying, but a true and honest thought, that if you become a teacher, by your pupils you'll be taught. As a teacher, I've been learning. You'll forgive me if I boast, as I've now become an expert on the subject I like most. Getting to know you. 
Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. Getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. Getting to know you, putting it my way but nicely. You are precisely my cup of tea. Getting to know you, getting to feel free and easy. When I am with you, getting to know what to say. Haven't you noticed, suddenly I'm bright and breezy because of all the beautiful and new things I'm learning about you. And gentlemen, oh, lovely. Haven't you noticed? Suddenly I'm bright and breezy because of all the beautiful and new things I'm learning about you. Well, this started out to be a lesson. Now let's get back to work. Your Majesty, you promised me a house, a brick residence adjoining the royal palace. Those were your words in your letter. No, Your Majesty, indeed. I am not your servant! <gasps> I never... Your servant! Your servant! Indeed, I'm not your servant! Although you give me less than servants pay! I'm a free and independent... Employee! Employee... Because I'm a woman, you think like every woman, I ought to be a slave or concubine. You conceited, self-indulgent, libertine, libertine. How I wish I'd called him that right to his face, libertine. And while we're on the subject, sire, there are certain goings on around this place. That I wish to tell you I do not admire. I do not like polygamy or even moderate bigamy. I realize that in your eyes that clearly makes a prigamy. But I am from a civilized land called Wales, where men like you are kept in county jails. In your pursuit of pleasure, you have mistresses who treasure you. They have no ken of other men beside whom they can measure you. A flock of sheep and you're the only ram. No wonder you're the wonder of Siam. <sighs> I'm rather glad I didn't say that. Not with all the women right there and the children. The children. The children, I'll not forget the children. No matter where I go, I'll always see those little faces looking up at me. At first, when I started to teach, they were shy and remained out of reach. But lately I thought one or two have been caught by a word that I've said or a sentence I've read. And I've got the occasional question that implies at the least a suggestion 
that the work I was trying to do was beginning to show with a few. That Prince Chulalongkorn is very like his father. He's stubborn but inquisitive and smart. I must leave this place before they break my heart. I must leave this place before they break my heart. Shall I tell you what I think of you? You're spoiled. You're a conscientious worker, but you're spoiled. Giving credit where it's due. There is much I like in you. But it's also very true that you're spoiled. Everybody's always bowing to the king. Everybody has to grovel to the king. By your Buddha, you are blessed. By your ladies, you're caressed. But the one who loves you best is the king. Yes, your majesty. No, your majesty. Tell us hello to go, your majesty. Make us some more decrees, your majesty. Don't let us off of our knees, your majesty. Give us a kick if you would, your majesty. Give us a kick if you would, your majesty. Oh, that was good. Your majesty. Well, surely you don't all believe that women are more lowly than men. Well, I don't. Once you have loved a man who sees you as his equal, you understand all other women who are in love like that. Even if she's just a school teacher. My love was named Tom. I think of Tom, I think about a night when the earth smelled of summer and the sky was streaked with light and the soft mist of England was sleeping on a hill. I remember this and I always will. There are new Lovers now on that same silent hill, looking at the same blue sea. And I know Tom and I are a part of them all, and they're all a part of Tom and me.
Before I sing my final piece tonight, I just want to thank you all so much for being here um, and for, for taking another meeting on Zoom. I know we're all so tired of Zoom, so I really appreciate that you're here. And I also want to thank a few important individuals for helping me get to this point. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank my teacher, Dr. Jacqueline horner Quiatek, um, who has been incredibly supportive during my time at NYU and who has helped me find my voice as a singer and as a teacher. And I'm so grateful to you, Jacqueline. Thank you so much. Um, I'd also like to thank my coach, Dr. Grant Weenus. Um, he isn't here in the meeting tonight, but he will be watching this later. He is, he is further engaged playing a recital live in person, which I can't wait to do one day. Um, for those of you who don't know, Grant is actually from Regina, which is my hometown. And um, it has been such a pleasure to work with him this semester and to get to know him. Uh, I think we've only met in person once and I was about two years old uh, <laughs> because he was the assistant music director for a production of Oliver with Regina Summer Stage. Uh, and my brother was in the show. So anyway, I'm excited to meet Grant in person soon as, as a grown adult. <laughs> Um, I'd also love to thank my collaborative pianist TC Kinser, who played so beautifully for these tracks and has been just a dream to work with in person and remotely. Thank you so much, TC. Um, I, I want to thank my classmates and my friends and all those people that have just been a text message or call away this past year. This year has been crazy and uh, the people I have to thank the most are my family. Um, <laughs> I've been at home with my mom and dad every day for the last 14 months and they haven't killed me yet. So they deserve a big round of applause. And um, they, they help me get to my dream city to study in my dream program and follow my dreams. And then they help me flee all of that at the beginning of the pandemic so I could be home and safe. And I'm just really, really grateful to them. Um, this last year, as I said, has been strange and stressful and scary for all of us. And it's made me think about the things that are most important, which is the, the health and safety of my loved ones. And um, being in the, you know, being able to watch my nieces and nephews grow up every day has just been so amazing. Um, even though, you know, we, we stay six feet apart and we wear masks, it's just, it's been so nice to be home during this time and to really, you know, get to spend time with my mom and dad. That's just been great. Um, and also cats. How would I have survived this pandemic without my cats? They get a thank you. <laughs> uh, so thank you again for coming and enjoy this last number. Tell me, is love still a popular suggestion or merely an obsolete art? Forgive me for asking this simple question. I'm unfamiliar with his heart. I'm a stranger here myself. Why is it wrong to murmur I adore him when it's shamefully obvious I do? Does love embarrass him or does it bore him? I'm only waiting for my cue. I'm a stranger here myself. I dream of a day of a gay warm day with my face between his hands. Have I lost the path? Have I gone astray? I ask and no one understands. Love me or leave me, that seems to be the question. I don't know the tactics to use. But if he should offer a personal suggestion, how could I possibly refuse when I'm a stranger here myself? Please tell me, tell a stranger, my curiosity goaded. Is there really any danger that love has been outmoded? <sighs> True romance is so fleshly. With what have you replaced? 
replaced it. Is skiing more enjoyable? Gin rummy more exquisite? What is your latest foible? For heaven's sake, what is it? I can't believe that love has lost its glamour, that passion is really passé. If gender is just a term in grammar, how can I ever find my way when I'm a stranger here myself? Can he avoid my available condition? Why these Victorian views? You see here before you a woman with a mission. I must discover the key to his ignition. And then if he should make a diplomatic proposition, how could I possibly refuse? How could I possibly refuse when I'm a stranger here myself? <sighs> Thank you. Thank you for coming. Hey, Emily. Oh my God, you were talking.